my opinion about startup conferences has uh, it has shifted over the past couple of years. I'm not a fan of startup conferences. Never worth the thousands of dollars that it costs. Now I sort of have to take that back. My main problem back then was ROI. And when you're paying hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars for flights and hotels and everything, it just begs the question of ROI. Return on return invest. on investment. Nope. Radio on internet. So I'm attending a bunch of conferences this quarter, speaking at a few of them, but for the others, I did have to pay for my ticket, and it's not a small price. So why are these tickets so expensive, and who is getting to keep all this cash? Because for any startup business, a $1,000 ticket or a $5,000 startup alley thing is a lot of money, any way you slice it. And for them, conferences promise customers investor intros, roundtables, and meeting Lupita Nyong'o for some reason. And if you're looking for that, a conference is probably not the place. So I sat down with a bunch of organizers, and they agreed to share numbers, numbers that they hadn't shared publicly before. And we looked at dozens of industry insights, and the main thing that we learned is that conferences are this extremely risky business, because despite the expensive tickets and the super expensive sponsorships and booths, organizers barely make any money, and a fair share of them close the whole thing at a loss. So let's talk about the actual numbers behind startup conferences in today's Company Friends. Now, before I get into breaking down that ticket price, let me spend a few couple minutes talking about whether or not these conferences are worth it for you. I've been to a fair share of conferences and trade shows, Saster, Collision, South by Southwest, and I went from this, I just can't see the ROI sort of attitude to actually enjoying them lately. And the key here is embracing networking. Visiting booths is cool. Only a handful of talks will be insightful, like the one I'm doing in Saster and Sastock next month. But the core of this whole thing is networking. It's not sales, because you won't be able to quantify the value. We did a whole video on the cost of hosting a booth and whether the ROI is there. But if you're positioning your company, you, if you require to meet people, partners, collaborators, other founders, then there are very few spaces like conferences where you can get so many relevant people in the same room. So I went from this full schedule of keynote to keynote, taking notes and just paying attention all the time to mostly just skipping these meetings and just spending the day chatting with people, truly. I, it kind of sucks, I'm a bit of an introvert, so my cheat sheet really is bringing my team with me. I wouldn't have thought that bringing a whole team would help you network, but it is easier. Team networking is so much easier. And now we have YouTube, and it's been a bit crazy that people now recognize me, or at least have heard of the Slapian brand. So it's also a bit of a test of our effectiveness, uh, our, how effective we are in marketing. If you didn't know yet, now if you didn't know yet, we're not in the business of making videos. Slapian is really a platform for founders to scale their startups. Also, by all means, I am speaking about real in the flesh events. Those virtual things are so 2020. Real humans with real beer in their hands because I think beer is a key to networking. All right, so let's talk about numbers now. Conferences are a massive business. In the US alone, in 2018, there were 1.8 million conferences, conventions or trade shows, which generated 3.2 million jobs and $321 billion in revenue, with some of the shittiest margins in the industry, but I'll get to this. And even if we reduce our scope and focus only on the tech world, we still have hundreds of conferences all over the US and all over the world. And there are niches within niches, but in this niche that is startups and SaaS, Saster and SaaS stock are the competing leaders. So Saster was started by this guy, Jason Lemkin. In 2012, he made a name for himself after selling Echo Sign to Adobe for a good amount of money. He started blogging and answering questions on Quora and in a matter of months, started bouncing this idea to convert this audience to this meetup, to a physical thing. And fast forward 10 years to this. They've operated their US conference for almost a decade, and the first thing that you will assume is that this happens from, that this comes from a large organization. When you combine our marketing, sales, everybody, content, it's only a team of 15, and it's for the most part, for as long as I've been here, it's been around that number. That part, in terms of like the 12 months, the core team is the 15 people that like are just consistently working, but the 800 people really, really, really start coming on board as we're about 90 days uh, prior to any show. So 15 people organize this massive event, hundreds of speakers, hundreds of sponsors, thousands of attendees, all of this work in an entire year, sprinted and compressed to this three-day event. And then COVID almost killed them in 2020, and I'm gonna bring that story in a sec. But precisely because of COVID, they started organizing their events outdoors. And that's been a hit. 
Some call it the Woodstock of tech. Some call it the Coachella of tech. It feels a little more of this like festival style tech conference. And it was just unique. It was different. People, I think, are just much more receptive to connect with one another versus being in an indoor conference. But the whole goal is to bring people together because, frankly, you attend conferences to network, learn from one another, help one another, and connect with one another. And so add to that the free food and the free booze. It's very much a festival vibe. A big evolution from the Lumi hotel that they used to have. But the better vibe and the better backdrop for photos doesn't come close to guaranteeing profits. It just makes things riskier. When they started, it took them three to four years to see any profit from their early conferences. Your math is correct that it takes a couple of at-bats for you to finally start seeing them, some numbers. But even then, the margins are not like unbelievably amazing, right? Moreover, costs rack up quickly. These aren't thousands of dollars for food or production. We're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars, sometimes millions on a single item for a single contractor. The ticket that you buy, you still have to get food, coffee. This is very appreciated, by the way, man. Like the fact that you have food and booze as part of the thing is, <laughs> is insanely okay. different. Yeah. That costs about $2 million, 500 to 600 for every attendee that sets that attend Saster, assuming they attend all three days. So if we were to cut this ticket to understand how much went to each of these things, we would have to start by extending it with the sponsor money. Sponsors and booths end up funding a good portion of the costs, of your costs of attending. It's a pretty even split, right? Um, for example, Europa at the beginning in 2018, it was very much 50-50, right? 50% 50 came from tickets, 50% came from sponsorship. As you scale, there are some companies that do a really good job at this where they double down on attendees um, and they basically own the meeting uh, aspect of the trade show. As time goes on, that split, that gap opens up a little where it's maybe 75% sponsorships, 25% tickets, right? And every year, typically, I've seen, at least from our experience, at least at Saster, that gap widens and widens. Add to that that many ticket sales happen in the last few weeks before the event. And that is why tickets get more expensive towards the last few days, because their risk is higher at that point. And of course, FOMO and pressure for people who are buying at the last minute. By the way, if we're one of those last minute buyers, I've got some codes for you. Like I said, I'm speaking at both of these competing conferences in September and October. And Saster San Francisco gave me a 30% discount code that you can use. Just type slide feed at checkout or use the link in the description. I'll be there. You can attend my talk and then we can have a beer. <laughs> but back to my point, if they miss this ticket sales mark, they are in the hole for things that they already paid for, for things that they already committed to. And nowhere was this a bigger hit than in 2020. More companies are dropping out of the world's largest electronics conference. More and more companies are becoming concerned about their employees' international travel. A big conference was just canceled and a big tech company is now backing out of another. In 2020, after we lost literally 10 million, the, the show that got postponed, we, we just 10 million was gone, right? And at the end of 2020, I remember as a team, we decided no matter what, we're just gonna go full steam ahead for this September show. No matter what happens, we're gonna try putting it on. And if people remember in 2021, it was like, uh, but we we were able to put on a show for 5,000 people. So if there's a possibility that you can lose millions of dollars, if you really don't know how much money you actually made, or if you actually lost money until the very last minute, until the very last few tickets, why go through the trouble of doing all this? Many companies have leveraged their reputations to create these massive events. And it seems like a natural evolution for a platform like Saster, like TechCrunch, or even like us to make this leap and go beyond what you see on the screen. And it was time to exploit the potential and meet people. And these human connections are obviously worth more than online connections. I understand that now. And it's one of the reasons why we've been forcing ourselves to attend more and more of these conferences. Companies and media outlets that take this risk are looking to maximize their reach to consolidate this digital presence and brand into the physical world. And it's the same reason sponsors have boots. It makes those customer connections real. And that's worth something. It's like the anti-metaverse, if you will. But the point is that for many organizers, that connection is the reason why all of this risk is worth it. And for us, I just hope that now it feels like the ticket isn't a complete waste of money. Hope to see you on the conferences that are happening in the next couple of months. If not, make sure you hit that subscribe and we'll see you next week.